What is our biggest argument? Hey YouTube, Kaylee and Jeff here with the Cloud9 family coming at you with a life update video. We've got a set of questions here to answer and uh, we're just gonna get right into it, alrighty? And um, also thanks for clicking on this video and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We'd love to have you on board. All right, ready babe? Yeah, time to get serious. Time to get serious. These are some serious questions, by the way. So here we go. Question number one, how do we feel about the coronavirus? <sighs> There's an overall sense of frustration we have been quarantined for about 13 days now. At first I wasn't sure. I was like, is this real? Is this a hoax? I don't know. And um, I've been watching the news and I've been watching uh, updates on um, the CDC website and the WHO website and watching the numbers of deaths climb and the numbers of uh, coronavirus cases climb. And it's making me nervous. So uh, I'm, I'm so nervous enough about it that I've decided to keep our family home. In my whole life, they have never shut down schools. Yeah. It's insane that they've shut down schools. They yeah. just don't do that. It doesn't, that doesn't happen. Yeah. And I feel like when, when they shut the schools down is when it got real for me. Cause yeah. I was like, this is serious. If they're keeping the kids home from school, then this is probably pretty serious. We only go out for a walk every day and it's draining. We're all kind of going stir crazy, you know, and uh, that's been a difficult part about when it. When they go to school, they have breakfast and lunch at school. We have to feed them all those meals. It's a lot of work. Just prepping the food, serving the food and cleaning up after the meals is a full time job. In and of itself. It's putting us on edge for sure. So is this ever yeah. gonna end? Are we gonna I know when move is the on? End? <laughs> I don't know. Jeffrey I... is more on the fence of what to believe. I feel pretty convinced that it's a real pandemic and that we should stay home. He's more like, Well, is it the media blowing it up? He doesn't really know what to believe. I don't think anything you see on your phone you can believe is true. I don't think it's fake news. Anyways, so um What's next? One thing I did want to touch on that I'm not going to go into too much detail about is are the kids going with their dads during the quarantine? As of right now, they did skip last weekend's visit and this weekend is our weekend. And so next weekend they're up for another visit and we're kind of in the air about if they're going to go or not. They did stay home last weekend. Next weekend, we're not sure what's going to happen. We think it's safer that they just stay home. Yeah. Until this all blows over. That's all I really wanted to say about that. Uh, so next serious topic for us is the custody schedule. Um, so their dads take them every other weekend and it's been pretty consistent. And then also probably once or twice a year, they will take them for like one or two weeks, like an extended stay. But pretty much every other weekend is our uh, custody schedule. Um, next question. What is it like having seven kids? The best and worst part of it. The best part is that you're never bored. I mean, there's always something to do. The ki Like when the kids are being good and they're all playing together and having fun and laughing, that's the best part. You can't explain unless you actually live it. The love is just endless. Yeah. The worst part is pretty much the same thing. There's like there's always something to do. Dishes, laundry. Right now we have five kids that need butt wipes. Literally like every hour of the day, you're wiping poop. a butt. You're touching a butt. poop. You're touching poop. And that's pretty much the worst part about it is there's, you're constantly working. People it, have this idea that stay at home moms are just sitting on their butts all day. And it's like, it's no. They're up cleaning and cooking and meal prepping and folding laundry and like talking to the kids, disciplining the kids. I can be honest and say that I haven't been helping as much as she wants, but I'm trying. And it's also hard for Jeffrey too, because he went from having no kids to having seven kids in a year. Yeah. I love the kids a lot. Like they're my whole world. 
I'll do anything for them. So to me, the best and worst part of having seven kids, definitely the worst part is all the cleaning. There's so much cleaning to do all day, every day. It just never ends. You never get on top of it all. So you just kind of have to accept the mess for what it is and live with it and do your best, you know? So for me, that's the worst part. And um, the best part, all the love, hugs, kisses, snuggles, the uh, they look at you with those big eyes and they smile and they're like, I love you, mom. It's like, that's what makes it worth it to me. That's the reward for all the hard work. And I also look into the future and I see big family gatherings, like everybody bringing their spouses and their families over. We're gonna have like family gatherings of like a hundred people, I feel like. And then him and I are gonna be sitting on the throne of like our family and like, we created this, you know? So like, to me, I look forward to that as an older person. And so that kind of gives me a, a reason for living this life, you know? Like something to really look forward to later on in life. So that's also one of the best parts for me. So do you want to go into our religious views? I mean, I believe that there is a higher power. There's gotta be someone else out there. You know, I feel like that's a touchy subject. Everyone has their own beliefs. Everyone has their own beliefs. You know? There's too much unknown. Yeah. I do believe in a higher power. Uh, what form that higher power is, I'm not really sure. And I feel like the mystery is the best part of life. The, the fact that we don't know what's going to happen when we die is why life is so exciting for me. So that's kind of my stance on religion. Next question. Do we spank our kids? Corporal punishment. How do you feel about that, babe? <sighs> I was spanked as a child. Nowadays, it's such a touchy subject. You spank them one time and they learn, I feel like. But they're not my kids to spank, so I don't spank them. And sometimes I feel like she should spank them in certain situations. I feel like they do need a, a good whack, you know, like on the butt. If they're doing something bad, they should know, bam, hey, that should never happen. That's the way I feel about it. I agree that uh, in certain situations, a little swat on the butt is like to get their attention, to know that, hey, this is not okay. This is not safe. Like maybe around the age of like two or three, Cash's age, I feel like it's appropriate. When they're older and they can talk and they can reason with you, I don't think it's appropriate at all. But um, definitely when they're uh, unreasonable that maybe once or twice a year, in my opinion. I don't think it needs to be done very often. And I feel like when you do spank them often, that it creates uh, animosity between you and your child and it kind of tarnishes the relationship that you have with them. Moving on, how do we feel about vlogging and how has vlogging affected our life? How do I feel about vlogging? We enjoy it a lot, but it also takes up a lot of time. It's stressful on the kids too because she has to do editing for hours and um, some videos can take me hours. I don't think people understand how hard vlogging is. I'm pretty excited to like look back at all the videos, even if this doesn't hit big or whatever. It's not about that. It's about having memories so our kids can see some fun things that we did, you know. And also they're going to be able to look back on these videos and like get to know who we are or who we were as parents. Yeah. Like in 20, 30 years from now, this is like a huge time capsule that we're creating for them that they can look back on and see their childhood, see where they came, where they come from. I mean, that's huge in and of itself. Um, There's some really fun parts about it for sure. Yeah, it's pretty fun. For me, for the vlogging, it's like social media to the next level, like the ultimate level of social media. You're sharing everything. You're putting yourself out there to be judged by others. There's gonna be people out there that don't like us and that's okay. And that's something that we have to just be okay with. So yeah, the vlogging for me, the hardest part I think is like being vulnerable and putting yourself out there. The best part about vlogging for me is like, I've like, I love doing it. I love editing the videos I love uploading the videos I love watching the subscriber count go up like every morning I check it and sometimes it climbs up one sometimes it doesn't climb at all 
sometimes overnight we'll get like five new subscribers and I'm like oh my god I get so excited and that to me is like fueling this whole thing like the excitement of it and just the fun of it and like for me I put so much time and effort into the vlogs and then to watch it like unfold and for people to like be watching them and enjoying them to me is like priceless it makes me feel so like awesome like I'm doing this and it's like really cool you know I'm doing this really cool thing and I feel fucking I feel awesome doing it you know so I don't know it's bringing out this whole side of me that like I didn't even know that I had so yeah, yeah. At, the vlogging is awesome and I at love first it. we were just like well at least me I was like every time I filmed something I was like god I sound dumb I just I hated the way I sounded, but now I just don't care. Anything else to say about vlogging, babe? Ah, uh, yeah, actually, it's pretty stressful when she edits. She gets like in this zombie mode where like no one can get her attention. It's like... I'm like this to my phone. I do all my editing on my phone on the Filmora Go app, if you're wondering. And I have headphones on and I'm like this for hours on my phone. Like that's the way I do it. I haven't graduated yet to uh, getting a vlogging camera and doing it on my computer, which I'm hoping someday I will get there. But moving on to our final question. What is our biggest argument according to you and then according to me? We both feel like the other person is not doing as much work. You get mad at me a lot because you think I don't put in as much work as you which is probably most likely true, you know? But I still do feel like I'm constantly doing stuff. So that probably is our biggest argument. Like um, we both feel like the other one is working harder than the other. I'm more in charge of like the dishes. I do the dishes every day. I've just kind of accepted that as part of my life. I also am pretty much in charge of doing the laundry. Sometimes he'll throw a load in every now and then, but I do, for the most part, I do all the laundry. Yeah. And um, then I feel like we split the the childcare in half. Although he doesn't get up at night with the babies, I do. I only get up with the babies at night. And that can be very uh, wearing on me. Like I breastfeed them. So it's kind of my own, my personal choice that I don't have help with them because they want to breastfeed at night. So he gets to sleep more than I do. And that I think is kind of a thing that I hold on, like a resentment that I have. Like you get to sleep more, it's not fair, you know? But um we definitely do both work very hard and he does take care of the animals. I don't ever have to feed the animals or worry that they have water. He takes care of all of that. He does handle all the trash and taking out the trash. He actually does feed the babies their solid food mostly. I, I don't feed the babies as much as he does. So he does take the brunt of that on. Yeah, that's kind of our biggest argument. I also feel like one of the other reasons we argue is like a miscommunication kind of thing. Like we're just frustrated in the moment with like our surroundings. And then the other one feels like, oh, are you frustrated with me? And so the other one is like, ah, what's wrong now? You know? And so I feel like that kind of st starts arguments sometimes. Like we both just are just frustrated in this life sometimes. And so the other one feels responsible for the frustration when really it's just our situation that's causing it. So. I think we have to give each other a little bit of a break, you know, and we're both not doing that with the kids not being in school and the coronavirus and your stress level. There's a lot of uh, factors going on that are causing stress yes. and we're both like on the edge and everyone needs to try and like forgive each other. Forgive. Yeah. Yeah. Just definitely try and. Give each other a break. Be patient and forgive each other. We got through all of our questions, so I guess we'll wrap the video up here. Thanks for tuning into the video, and don't forget to click subscribe for more videos coming your way. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, bye, YouTube. Bye, YouTube.